This is what energy generation in Europe will increasingly look like. Offshore wind power is replacing fossil fuels as a source of clean and more affordable electricity. Major new sites are about to be launched, like the Boschella 1 and 2 wind farm in the North Sea, 22 kilometers off the Dutch coast. You can see the greatness of this. The field is very large, and we are now standing under a turbine that is already running. It's immense. 94 wind turbines are being attached to the seabed at depths ranging from 14 to 40 meters. When completed, this will be the largest offshore wind farm in the Netherlands. This is the cable. This is the cable. It's pulled in from the seabed, attached down there, and will be later connected to the switchboard. Above, we'll place the tower with the turbine, and then the entire installation will be complete. This wind farm will deliver electricity for one million Dutch households. It will also help decarbonize the coastal industry by powering a new electrolyzer plant that will produce renewable hydrogen for carbon neutral fertilizers. There are very advanced plans for hydrogen production. Everything is ready now, it's just a matter of launching it. The first signs of a changing tide, anticipated in the EU's new strategy on offshore renewable energy, that maps out a path to replacing imported fossil fuels, creating industrial opportunities and green jobs across the continent. It's expected that in 30 years, more than a quarter of Europe's electricity will be produced at sea, up from only 2% today. Already the world leader in this sector, Europe aims to further increase its offshore wind power capacity 20-fold by 2050. This means new factories, new port infrastructure and new jobs in coastal regions and beyond. A major opportunity for Europe's blue economy. Like many things in the offshore wind sector, investments are enormous. Apollo is one of the newly built installation vessels moving turbine components between ports and offshore wind farms. Teams at the port of Ostend in Belgium work day and night, seven days a week, finalizing another large wind farm 45 kilometers off the coast. Loading 81 meter long blades on the vessel is not easy, especially when it's windy. Right now you can see one of our B81 blades being brought forward to the key site for loadout. We bring the blades one by one forward, loading onto the Apollo. The whole area here we are using to pre-assemble the larger components. Some new ports are now built specifically for the offshore wind sector use, but others like the port of Ostend have to be modernized. So most harbors that are not purpose built, we need to invest some kind of, of, of money and time to make it fit for our operations. Some of the improvements will always be permanent here. For example, the roll roll ramp, where we are transporting our equipment by roll on, roll off vessel had to be modified to withstand the heavy loads of our components. The whole logistics chain is being improved to handle components that are manufactured in various countries across Europe and are becoming increasingly large in size. The A380 airplane, the biggest passenger airplane in the world, can fly between our wings. The surface that they cover is approximately three big UEFA Championship football fields. Yeah. Turbines are getting bigger and bigger to respond to the increasing demand of green energy. It means more people getting employed, factories being built, pre-assembly sites being set up like this one. The technological development is led by industrial giants, but it has also prompted small innovative startups that come up with new ways of using offshore renewables, like this prototype that combines solar panels with vertical wind rotors. Developed with EU funding, energy pontoons can be deployed at sea, for example, to provide power for water desalination in developing countries and small islands. 
there is a large demand for it because uh, you have to understand that, uh, for example, the developing countries is a billion dollar market. Water is also a billion dollar market. And those two are actually expanding and looking at reliable solutions. Experts say optimizing planning will help improve the economy of offshore renewables. The future Krieger's Flak wind farm is located at sea between Denmark and Germany. It connects to the power grids of both countries simultaneously so it can supply electricity according to highest demand and price. Some costs could be decreased with new technologies offering greater flexibility, such as floating wind turbines. Researchers in Spain have demonstrated that telescopic towers they have installed without heavy lifting vessels are potentially saving a third of costs. The sector employs 62,000 Europeans and keeps demanding more skilled workers, especially in coastal areas. This factory in Cherbourg, France, is producing the world's largest wind turbine blades, 107 meters long. The advantage of having a factory in Cherbourg is the port location. The blades can be loaded on the vessel and delivered to the nearby offshore farms. We have about 400 people working here, and our production targets within a year's four blades per month. Responding to growing demand, the factory recently hired hundreds of new workers. They come from all backgrounds and are trained on site. It's necessary to train more because we're understaffed here in the production department. It's a 107 meter long blade. We need a lot of people around it to be able to do our job. There are lots of hiring positions in the wind power sector, production operators, quality assurance, with jobs in logistics, in maintenance. With its 12 megawatt turbine recently certified for commercial use, the company has plenty of blades to make. This is a growing sector. The launch of the Cherbourg site in the Normandy region has led to the creation of more than 550 direct jobs at the plant and 2,000 indirect jobs at the local level. The massive expansion of the offshore wind sector comes with a price tag to match. The European Commission estimates that 800 billion euros of investment would be needed between now and 2050, mostly from private companies. A breath of fresh air for post-COVID economic recovery and for Europe's transition towards clean and sustainable energy.